my name is Oksana Turchik and I currently live in Toronto, but I'm originally from Lviv, Ukraine. I've been living in Canada for 10 years and uh, I've been a member of Euromaidan Canada that has been created under the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress Toronto branch and working to help Ukraine since the beginning of Maidan. Ever since it started, it's been, it's been tough. Uh, I've, I remember the first night when um, I was watching on, the, on my phone how the uh, students were beaten up and I saw Ruslana was there and I actually messaged her on Facebook and she responded and I was like oh my god Ruslana what's happening what should we do and she said you know just spread the word tell the world that this is happening and that we need to do something about it and ever since I've been following um, all the events really closely going to all the protests and supporting all of the events that have been happening in Toronto uh, luckily we had a, a large group of activists that uh, came from Ukrainian Canadian Congress Toronto branch and they organized Euromaidan committee and when I realized that you know this group gathers pretty much every week and work working tirelessly for Ukraine I decided to join them because originally I was doing work on my own but then I realized that you know together it's we can do so much so much more and so many great things so I've joined the committee I've been attending their meetings um, for over a year now and honestly they've the committee and their members have been phenomenal doing everything from you know buying wood for Maidan members to now we're buying vehicles and involving a government to help us fund some of the bigger programs. So it's been, you know, here Maidan has been doing like literally everything from buying t-shirts to working with the government to help uh, to get more um, help from even the Prime Minister Harper and a lot of the great stuff that Canada has been doing on a government level. So it's all been um, definitely helped and lobbied by your Maidan Canada uh, committee members. We've been told actually that what they value the most in Ukraine is actually realizing the moral support. It's not even that much of an, I mean obviously money really helps in, in, ter in terms of the crisis, but when they actually realize that, you know, when, what we do right now is, we, for example, we buy a vehicle and we put a sticker saying it's Canada, Euromaidan is supporting you. And they told us that when the soldiers see that vehicle with a Canadian flag and saying, oh my God, it's actually Canada supporting you. It's not just, you know, uh, your you know, typical vehicle. It's like, oh my God, somebody actually cares about me from Canada enough to buy me this vehicle or this, you know, IFAC or these shoes or anything. We've sent even boots that we recently had to dress up an entire brigade of like 54 people and when we actually sent um, the uniforms they were like you know what it's not even the uniform that you sent me it's the realization that you know somebody cares about me enough from Canada to send me a uniform because they actually didn't have anything to fight in. One of course like we do need money to do a lot of the things that we do but Recently, what we've been doing is, uh, for example, we found uh, a large donors for uh, like wheelchairs. So we are able to take, for example, you know, ten thousand or not even ten thousand, five thousand of dollars and ship two hundred thousand worth of wheelchairs. So what we try to do is try to leverage as much as we can, and you know. We, we have a lot of areas that we cover, like Army is number one for us. We, we try to help with uh, you know anything from vehicles and uniforms and shoes and uh, some optics that we can. Uh, same, we also work with humanitarian things like um, you know even helping um, send poor kids of uh, Atoll Heroes to, to camps. We also do that. Uh, repairing hospitals. Uh, we've recently helped repair a uh, military hospital in Kiev. Their bathrooms were just terrible, but you know, a thousand dollars later, it was great new bathroom for the soldiers. So, and I think the, the challenge is, uh, you know, sometimes I, I find that um, the community involvement sometimes is a bit like a roller coaster. You know, you get these uh, great ups and downs. If, if it's a great event, for example, when we had Andri Porobi, the uh, the response was phenomenal. A lot of people showed up. We had great uh, donors, very generous um, sponsors who came up to the stage and gave us, you know, ten thousand dollars for ambulances. It, it was really phenomenal. But then there are, some, you know, sometimes where I think we're all people. We get tired, and some, sometimes it's like, you know, <laughs> very hard to gather money. So we always try to come up with uh, some new ideas. How do we engage people? How do we engage the community? I think the most important is just for everybody just to care, you know, in any way you can. Like you don't have to spend a lot of money. Like 
a recent example was there was this little girl. She was uh, her father died. And she was drinking well in a in a thaw. He died in a thaw, and she wanted to have this specific doll, like a specific, from a specific cartoon. And the volunteers in Ukraine told me, you know, we can't find it for her. We've tried everywhere, and you know, I went on Amazon, spent twenty dollars, and sent that that doll, and the girl was so happy. So you know, it doesn't always have to be something huge. It's just some little things that that matter, and people there like they really appreciate it. They they really do because for them, like I always talk to uh, the volunteers, and they always tell us, oh my God, you guys are phenomenal. Like you never give up. Like no matter what we ask, you're always trying to help. And like, you know, sometimes the asks are big, and we we're not always able to help everybody. But you know, they know that they have somebody to rely on every time they need, and it, and it really helps them. If, if we don't uh, favor, you know, any specific battalion or any specific organization, because we have the way that Euromaidan was formed is literally people from every every city in Ukraine. It's Lviv, it's Sumy, it's Chernivtsi, it's Kiev. So we all have trusted people in Ukraine that we've, you know, some some of the volunteers that I work with, I like, literally grew up with them. So I know that there are people that can trust. And we have, for example, we started a new project. It's called uh, Families um, Helping uh, Families of Otto Heroes. So we're collecting a database of um, all the families where the father died. And we're working together with Ukrainian organizations. So that way we have, you know, if you want to help the families and the children, we can give you the address, you can talk to them, you can, you know, send them a parcel, clothing, food, anything you like. It doesn't really have to be money. Then we work with different brigades. We work with um, Ministry of Defense. We work with um, volunteer battalions. We've helped a lot uh, um, with the field hospitals. We also support the Patriot Defense Program that was uh, created by Ulana Suprun. So we, we really don't favor any specific direction. And I think that's kind of the um, the uniqueness of Euromaidan because I find that a lot of organizations tend to pick you know one specific direction and Euromaidan is trying to put out fires where you know it's most needed. To be honest, um, I found personally and I think we found throughout, throughout the community that it's easiest to fundraise through people who have Ukrainian roots at least. So they don't necessarily have to be born in Ukraine. We have some phenomenal you know, supporters who weren't even born in Ukraine, but they care so much that they keep helping, but their grandma was Ukrainian or they did have some Ukrainian roots. So it is, I would say it is the toughest to be able to, uh, to you know, to, to, to build that awareness among non-Ukrainian uh, part of the population, because I think it's natural, you know, you have Ukrainian roots, you really care, it's, it's in your heart, it's in your blood. I mean, I can't even imagine people who don't care. Uh, but we, we've also had some supporters from um, Canadian companies and actually some Canadian companies have stepped up and donated uh, stuff to us. Like we had, for example, a company that wanted to donate um, like linens, like white linens, so we could uh, so we send them to the hospitals. We had a recently a company that um, donated those special films so that you put it on the, it's like bulletproof film so that when the when the bullet hits, it doesn't shatter the glass. So we did have some, a lot of like, I find that from uh, like uh, non-Ukrainians, it, it's mostly the companies who step up and say, you know what, we have these wheelchairs, Why we, it's a great cause, we'll give it to you. Whereas individuals, it's, it's, it's tougher because it's not as close to their heart. And sometimes they probably don't even, you know, they might not even know what's going on. Like I've been doing a lot of education in my work, so now everybody knows. But you know, it, it's tough because if you're not Ukrainian, you're like, you know, everywhere in the world is tough, you know, so it's, it's harder to fundraise through individuals. Uh, that's a great question actually because what we've been trying to do is uh, we've been trying to also support Ukrainian factories and give them work because what happens today is you know the war is happening people need work right they need they still need jobs that didn't go anywhere and we found some great Ukrainian manufacturers that learn how to do it very well I've recently I've purchased boots for 30 Canadian dollars a pair I've sent them to guys they were really happy they said oh my god I can't believe Ukrainian are actually making these shoes because I think when the war started a lot of the stuff we were getting was from here because it was more quality and it was more sophisticated but as the war is progressing Ukrainian manufacturers have actually you know uh, stepped up and they're doing some great stuff right now and I in fact 
would encourage anybody to, as much as you can, buy stuff in Ukraine because that way you're helping them with their economy and they need jobs right now too with the war. So we've been trying to order as much as we can from Ukraine. Well, I think one priority is, you know, it's actually working with the government in Ukraine and finding those trusted people in Ukraine that we can trust and rely on and, you know, getting that uh, support from the government and knowing that it's going exactly where it needs to go. So we've been building a lot of relationships there to make sure that, you know, if Canada is giving that help, we're able to control it, monitor it, and make sure that it's get, it gets to where it needs to get. A lot of the festivals are coming up these days, and we even went to Zolotay Clan last weekend, even though there was raining really bad, we still had the fundraising tent there. So you're going to see us at pretty much all festivals you can imagine, like Blue Rest Festival, Centennial Park, Ivana Kupala. So if you see our tent and anything you buy there, all the proceeds do go to Ukraine 100%. We never, you know, spend any money on administrative costs or anything like that. Everything goes to Ukraine. So if you see our tent, um, just, you know, it's, it's it's great for people to, to support us there as well because a lot of work goes into it. Like, we, we all have full-time jobs, have kids, and we do it all just, you know, based on pure good heart. So, because a lot of people are also saying, oh, you know what, I'm, I won't give any money because they're probably going to steal it. So I'm saying that's not an excuse because if you want to give money, you find somebody who doesn't steal and you and you still donate. And I can tell you that Euromaidan is a, is a good place to go because we control every single dollar and we have trusted volunteers, trusted organizations. And if you are looking for a place to donate that and you want to know that it gets to where you want it to go, you definitely go there. So people who say that I'm not going to give because somebody's going to steal, I probably just don't want to give the money. <laughs> I see it like that. So. For example, uh, we had a great project recently done by Antonina Kunko where she was able to get uh, a U.S. company to donate uh, like 100,000 worth of prosthetic products. So they actually just went and donated those bionic hands and, and then went to Ukraine and trained the specialists. So it's these things, you know, wheelchairs, and, and now we're, um, I think we're really close to getting a government of Saskatchewan to donate some ambulances for Ukraine. So it's things like this that count as in-kind donations, and then we also had over 300,000 of just, you know, personal donations and through events. Thank you for to all, everybody who's been helping, because we know it's been, it's been really tough, and it's really hard on people, because this war has been going on for, I think, much longer than we've expected, and, you know, it's not like a year ago, it was hard. It was we were speechless to see poor kids be beaten up on, uh, in Kiev. Now we're watching soldiers die every day, and it's a scary thing. It's it's became normal to us right now because there's so many so much death going on. But you know, we have to keep fighting because I believe that you know God is with us, and and they will they will not be able to break us because as long as we're united and we're helping each other, we can win for sure, and we will win. It's just a matter of time.